Church in Juneau, Alaska. Today we have a special liturgy to celebrate St. Brendan the Navigator, who is our feast, who is our patron and whose feast day is today. The Eucharist that we are celebrating today is taken largely from a Celtic primer, which was compiled by Brendan O'Malley, so it will not be the usual prayer book service. And um, you can follow along in your leaflet if you have one, or simply listen along and enjoy. We begin with a statement from St. Brendan when he said, The Eucharist is a concentrate of God's presence in all things. We begin our worship with the opening hymn, I the Lord of Sea and Sky. Lord. 
Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our collect for today is the prayer of St. Brendan, and let us say it together. Help me to journey beyond the familiar and into the unknown. Give me the faith to leave old ways and break fresh ground with you. Christ of the mysteries, I trust you to be stronger than each storm within me. I will trust in the darkness and know that my times, even now, in front your hand. Tune my spirit to the music of heaven, and somehow make my obedience count for you. Amen. <laughs> A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For our transgressions before you are many, and our sins testify against us. Our transgressions indeed are with us, and we know our iniquities. Transgressing and denying the Lord, and turning away from following our God, talking oppression and of revolt, conceiving lying words and uttering them from the heart. Justice is turned back, and righteousness stands at a distance. For truth stumbles in the public square, and uprightness cannot enter. Truth is lacking, and whoever turns from evil is despoiled. The Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no justice. He saw that there was no one, and was appalled that there was no one to intervene. So his own arm brought him victory, and his righteousness upheld him. He put on righteousness like a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on garments of vengeance for clothing, and wrapped himself in fury as in a mantle. According to their deeds, so will he repay. Wrath to his adversaries, requital to his enemies, to the coastlands he will render requital. So those in the west shall fear the name of the Lord, and those in the east his glory. For he will come like a pent-up stream that the wind of the Lord drives on. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm for today is Psalm 69, verses 32 through 38. We'll read it responsibly by whole verse. I will praise the name of God in song. I will proclaim his greatness with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than offering of oxen, more than bullocks with horns and hoofs. The afflicted shall see and be glad. You who seek God, your heart shall live. For the Lord listens to the needy, and his prisoners he does not despise. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, and the seas and all that moves in them. For God will save Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah. They shall live there and have an intercession. The children of his servants will inherit it, and those who love his name will dwell therein. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with them. A great gale arose, and the waves beat into the boat. So the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 
T today we celebrate Brendan, a real man, a saint who lived from 486 to 578 in the Christian era. Brendan is famous for his journeys. One of the first bestsellers in Europe was the fantabulous Voyage of Brendan that was published about 600 years later and became enormously popular. As we think about Brandon and any of the Celtic saints, we have to remember that the Celtic Christian faith was built on the stories and the traditions of the pagan religions that preceded the Christian, Christian life in Europe and in the British Isles, and also was built on many of the stories from scripture. So, you'll find those two strands woven together in the stories and the traditions about the saints. But I think Brendan's story has much to teach us in terms of our spirituality, and that's what I want to focus on today. Brendan was born in Western Ireland and as a child was sent to be fostered by a holy woman, St. Eta. Later he was educated at a Christian abbey and became a monk and then an abbot himself. Apparently, Brendan had a serious case of itchy feet, and he prayed to God to be sent to a far country. Lo and behold, a holy man named Barinthus came to Brendan and reported that he had an estranged son who had gone off to a far island called the Land of the Saints, full of fragrant flowers and fruit. Perhaps his hope was that Brendan would reconcile him with his son, although the story doesn't tell us that. This seemed to Brendan to be a call from God, and after consulting with 14 fellow monks and a period of fasting and dreaming, he decided to accept the call. We have to wonder about Brendan's sense of call to go on this journey. Sea travel was dangerous, and he would be leaving everything and everyone that he knew and loved. Still, he went. I wonder how many of us would have passed over a conversation like Brendan had with Berinthus and not recognized it as a call from God and not responded and not prayed over it and not engaged with our companions over it. I wonder how many casual conversations or even deep ones we have passed over as insignificant when in fact they were opportunities to transform our lives to serve God, and to discover new worlds. Habit and familiarity are comfortable, but they can be a kind of prison. Perhaps we need to learn to listen more closely to what strangers in our lives have to say. Perhaps they are angels with messages from God. In any event, Brendan and his, and his companions did take off, going to the western port of Iran, where they bid farewell to the saints they knew, sailing due west across the ocean, which according to my map would take them into the vicinity of Canada. At first they had good strong winds, but then the winds died down and the monks took up oars. But Brendan said, Do not be afraid, for we have God as our guide. Put up your oars and do not toil anymore. God will guide this boat and company as God pleases. What an amazing expression of trust in God. To allow God to guide the direction of our lives across whatever seas we've been struggling to paddle in. I'm not fond of the expression, let go and let God. But there is a certain freedom and peace in letting God's wind, biblically speaking, God's breath, set our course and the pace at which we move. It's a good thing to have a sense of call and act on it, as Brendan did. But it may also be a good thing, when we seem to be battling the elements of our lives, to simply stop and rest and wait and see where God leads us. It takes trust. It means giving up control. Or, or perhaps 
God knows where God is leading us. God knew where he was taking Brendan. The winds took them to an island where, lo and behold, there was Corinthus. They, there they stayed while Corinthus bathed them and gave them clothes, and they celebrated the Eucharist. Then Corinthus sent them off again to the paradise of birds, where they celebrated Easter. Two weeks later, Corinthus met up with them again on that, in that paradise, and again brought them all they needed. And a bird lit upon the prow of the ship and sang gloriously beating with its wings on the side of the boat and outlining the journeys to come. And from this we see in Brennan's life the ability to recognize grace, beauty, and praise. It's easy in our lives to focus on ugliness and darkness. There is much of that in our world. But think of what Brendan would have celebrated in our world. The generosity of neighbors, the love of the community, art and drama, music and dance, the many languages and cultures spoken among us, not to mention ravens and eagles, bear and deer and doll sheep, and the loveliness of the land mountains here and in the distance, sea and lakes and rivers. How Brendan would have celebrated this place just as we can celebrate it. Brendan and his company then returned to Ireland for a time before setting out again, this time finding the land of promise of which he had previously learned. Let me share from a book, The Wisdom of the Celtic Saints, by Edward Selner, from which I have been borrowing. When they approached the land and were entering its harbor, they heard the voice of a certain elder speaking to them. O oh, holy pilgrims, tired men who have searched for this country for so long, remain where you are for a little while and rest from your labors. When they had done so, the elder said, Dear brothers in Christ, do you not see that this, this is glorious and lovely land on which human blood has never been shed? Leave everything you have in your boat except the clothes which you are wearing and come on shore. When they had landed, each of them kissed the others and the elder wept tears of joy. Search and see the borders and regions of paradise where you will find health without sickness, pleasure without contention, Union without quarrel, feasting without diminution, meadows filled with the sweet scent of fair flowers, and the attendance of angels all around. Happy indeed is he whom Brendan, son of Tinbulk, shall summon here to join him, to inhabit forever and ever the island on which we now are. When they saw paradise in the midst of the ocean waves, they marveled at the wonder, wonders of God and his power. What place had Brendan and his companions come to except heaven on earth? Yet it had taken the men two joy voyages and seven years to find this holy place, the kind of place in life that all of humanity seeks, a place that provides for the needs of its people, a place of peace and health, a place where people dwell without hatred and hostility. And they saw that this kind of world, this kind of place, this kind of life could only come from God. Now this may have been a dream or a vision, but it is a vision that we would all do well to hold on to and long for and share our dream with one another. This is indeed the vision God had when he created the world and placed humanity in it. In fact, Brendan later returned to Ireland, to his abbey, to his loved ones there. And he told them about all these holy things that had happened. 
and more, too, too many to share in one sermon. But in his return, he brought a taste of what his journeys had taught him. And if you can't imagine anything other than that the lives of his friends and family were transformed, along with his own, because he had dared to venture out to where God called him. And that is perhaps the last spiritual gift we received from Brendan, that when we see and hear holy things, when we envision new possibilities for humanity, we are bound to share them. What glimpses of sacred things we receive through the grace of God, we are given not just for ourselves, but for our families, our friends, our neighbors, even the strangers who come to our doors. Last week I quoted the sound of music. Love isn't love till you give it away. Neither are God's gifts, like those he gave to Brendan and continues to give to us, complete until we share them with one another. Amen. Let us share together in the creed. Our God is the God of all humans, the God of heaven and earth, the God of sea and rivers, the God of the sun and moon, the God of all the heavenly bodies, the God of the lofty mountains, the God of the lowly valleys. God is above the heavens, and he is beneath the heavens. Heaven and earth and sea and everything that is in them, such he has as his abode. He inspires all things. He gives life to all things. He stands above all things. And he stands beneath all things. He enlightens the light of the sun. He strengthens the light of the night and the stars. He makes wells in the arid land and dry islands in the sea. And he places the stars in the service of the greater lights. He has a son who is co-eternal with himself and similar in all respects to himself. And neither is the Son younger than the Father, nor is the Father older than the Son. And the Holy Spirit breathes in them. And the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are inseparable. Amen. We will follow with the bidding prayer of St. Martin. With all our hearts and minds, we pray to the Lord who looks upon the earth and makes it tremble. For peace and tranquility in our time and for your holy Catholic Church from one end of the earth to the other. For Mark, our bishop and shepherd, and for all bishops, presbyters, and deacons, and all who administer in your church. For this place and all who dwell in it. For all who are in authority, for the bereaved, the dispossessed, and those who seek refuge. For those who travel, those who do penance, those who learn the faith. For those in your holy church who bring forth the fruits of compassion. For ourselves, through the prayers of your holy apostles and martyrs, grant us, Lord, your forgiveness. Grant us, Lord, a Christian and peaceful end. Grant us, Lord, your holy bond of love to abide forever among us. Guard, Lord, the holiness and purity of your, our Catholic faith. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, peace you commanded, peace you gave us, peace you have left us. Grant us your peace from heaven and order this day and all the days of our life in your peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory today is given to us by the two Stephanies. Our loose offering today will go into the general fund. If you wish to send a contribution to St. Brandon, send it to us at 4207 Mendenhall Loop Road, Juneau, Alaska 99801.
all living creatures. Come, O Lord, in the bread of life. Praise be to you, O Lord God Almighty, for our homes, our families, our friends and loved ones. Praise be to you for all the people around us everywhere in this wounded world. Come, O Lord, in the cup of healing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. You, O Father, with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, our God. You are God, one immortal, incorruptible, unmoving, invisible and faithful, wonderful and worthy of praise, strong and worthy of honor. You are God, most high and magnificent, living and true wise and powerful, holy and splendid, great and good. You are God, awesome and peace-loving, beautiful and righteous, pure and kind, blessed and just, tender and holy. You are God not in the singularity of one person, but in the trinity of substance. We believe you, we bless you, we adore you, and praise your name forevermore. We praise you through Christ, who is the salvation of the universe, through Christ, who is the life of human beings, through Christ, who is the resurrection of the dead. Through him the angels praise your majesty. The dominations adore. The powers of the heaven tremble. The virtues and the blessed seraphim celebrate in exaltation. So grant, we pray you, that our voices may be admitted to the, that of the chorus in humble declaration of your glory as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And I'm going to skip ahead to page 12. As the heavenly creatures resound on high the praise of your glory, your goodness wish that it should be known, made known to your servants. And this proclamation made not in the starry realms to be as a gift, not only to be known, but also to be imitated. Therefore, Jesus, the night before he suffered for the salvation of us all, in the midst of his apostles and disciples, took bread in his holy hands, and looking up to you, God the Father Almighty, gave thanks, blessed, and broke it, and then giving it to his disciples, said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the life of the age. In like manner, after supper, taking the cup in his hands, and looking up to heaven to you, God the Father Almighty gave thanks, blessed it, and handed it to his disciples, and said, Take, drink from this, all of you, for this is the cup of my holy blood, of the new and eternal covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, do it in remembrance of me, showing my passion to all and looking for my coming again. Therefore, most merciful Father, look upon the commandment of your Son, the mysteries of the Church, your gifts to those who believe you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our holy God and Lord and Savior, who with you and the and Lord and the Holy Spirit reigns forever, eternal Godhead, to the ages of ages. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are full to sing. <laughs>
sin to come. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mary, ever virgin, mother of God, and of your blessed apostles Peter and Paul, and of Andrew, and of Brendan, and all the saints, mercifully give us peace in our days, that through the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all troubles. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. They recognized the Lord, alleluia. In the breaking of the loaf, alleluia. For the loaf that we break is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, alleluia. The cup which we bless is the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, alleluia. For the remission of our sins, alleluia. O Lord, let your mercy come upon us, alleluia. In you, O Lord, have I put my trust, alleluia. They recognized the Lord, alleluia, in the breaking of the loaf, alleluia. O Lord, we believe that in this breaking of your body and pouring out of your blood, we become your redeemed people. We confess that in taking the gifts of this pledge here, we lay hold in hope of enjoying its true fruits in the heavenly places. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us your peace. He gives bread, heavenly bread to the hungry and to the thirsty water from the living spring. Christ, the Lord himself, comes, who is Alpha and Omega. He shall come again to judge us all. Come, you holy ones, receive the body of Christ, drinking the holy blood by which you were redeemed. And those who are not present with us can come and receive the Holy Eucharist at noon when we will also be having a celebration of our life together and of St. Brendan, our patron. Lord, may we be wakeful at sunrise to begin a new day for you, cheerful at sunset for having done our work for you, thankful at moonrise and under starshine for the beauty of your universe, and may we add what little may be in us to add to your great world. Amen. Let us go forth in the goodness of our merciful Father, in the gentleness of our brother Jesus, in the radiance of his Holy Spirit, in the faith of the apostles, in the joyful praise of the angels, for the holiness of the saints, in the courage of the martyrs. May the Creator bless you and keep you. May the beloved His compassion face you and have mercy on you. May the eternal Spirit's countenance be turned to you and give you peace. May the three in one bless you. We close our worship with the hymn, Lord of all hopefulness.
happy St. Brendan's Day, and thank you for worshiping with us today.